Assalamu alaikum dear viewers and welcome to Raza English Academy. Uh, today's lecture is a continuation of the previous lecture which I delivered uh, as part of a series of lectures which I hope will be very helpful for the people who are going to attempt the PPSC examination this year for lectureship in English. So we were talking about the ages, different ages of English literature and uh, now uh, in the last lecture we talked about the Anglo-Saxon period a or age and the middle English age. Now we move on to the next age and this one is the very prominent age in literature. It is the Renaissance. So let's move on to the uh, slides and see what we have to know about this particular period. So here I have uh, highlighted the Renaissance which started in 1500 and continued till uh, 1660. This is a topic for today and that is what we are going to talk about during this lecture. So uh, we, when we talk about the historical background of, of this particular age, uh, the Renaissance which started in 1500 and continued till 1660 is considered the most important and fervent period in cultural, artistic, political and economic rebirth or revival of the European life in general and its influences on the English lifestyle and literature are no less significant. The period spans from the 14th century to the 17th century and marks the promotion of uh, the rediscover, uh, rediscovery of classical philosophy, literature and art. So this is what we have as historical background of this age. Uh, another thing that uh, I want to add is that this period is often uh, subdivided into four parts. The first part being the Elizabethan age. Uh, which started in 1558 and continued to 1603 then the Jacobian age which uh, started in 1603 and continued till 1625 then the Carolyn age which started in 1625 and continued till 1649 and finally the Commonwealth period or the Commonwealth age and uh, it is it started in 1649 and continued till 1660 so uh, you can see that I have already told you in the previous uh, vid uh, video lecture that my uh, motive is not only to give you uh, the information but also to teach you how to collect data for your objective paper. So here I have highlighted all the main points like Elizabethan age and its span, the Jacobian age and its span, the Carolyn age and its span and the Commonwealth period and its span. So these are the things you have to keep in your mind. We move on to the next slide and again we are still in the historical background but this time it is the historical background of Elizabethan age. We started in 1558 and continued till 1603. Well it is called the golden age and is notable for its matchless poetry, music and literature. The era is most famous for theatre. It was an age of exploration and expansion abroad like uh, uh, many ex uh, expansionist desires of the white man, the Englishman, also came to service during this period. While in England itself, the Protestant Reformation began to be accepted. This age is different from its previous and its following reigns. It was a period of peace between Protestants and Catholics. Uh, political tension between Parliament and the monarchy also remained controlled for some time. So it was uh, comparatively. Uh, peaceful era. When we talk about the literary figures and works of the Elizabethan age, uh, the most important thing we have to keep in mind that drama as a literary yawn flourished most in this age. The most important figure of the history of English drama, Sir William Shakespeare, belongs to the same age. So uh, we, may see, uh, we can uh, say that like uh, William Shakespeare's name is enough to make an age great. Uh, he is so prolific and so active a writer. So uh, uh, William Shakespeare, he was born on uh, in April 1564 and died on April 23, 1616. Shakespeare is known for his tragedies, but his comedies and history plays are no less significant. And he also wrote some matchless sonnets. So uh, we move on to the next point, that is William Shakespeare's tragedies. Uh, his uh, more like whatever he wrote was full of wisdom, uh, 
his uh, word play was excellent he knew how to uh, win his audience and tragedy by far has been the most uh, you can say influential way to uh, move the audience so he wrote antony and cleopatra coriolanus cymbeline hamlet julius caesar king lear macbeth othello romeo and juliet timon of athens titus andronicus troilus and cressida these are the tragedies that shakespeare wrote next we see his comedies uh, his comedies are all's well that ends well as you like it comedy of errors love's labors lost measure for measure merchant of venice merry wives of windsor midsummer night's dream much ado about nothing taming of the shrew tempest twelfth night two gentlemen of verona and winter's tale so these are the comedies he wrote apart from comedies he also wrote some history plays and his histories or history plays are henry fourth he wrote it uh, in uh, as part 1 and henry 4 part 2 it was in two parts then henry 5 then henry 6 part 1 part 2 and part 3 then henry 8 king john richard 2 and richard 3 these are his histories so while talking about shakespeare i have omitted lots of details about his life is uh, you can say personal details i have concentrated only on his uh, date of birth and date of then and then his works so uh it is a brief overview because it is a brief overview uh, there can be like uh, when we uh, talk about shakespeare there can be lectures of hours even for months and years and the topic would not come to an end the things he has written but we are preparing for the objective paper so these are the things that you have to keep in your mind all the time we move on to the next writer of the age next most prominent writer of the age and that was christopher marlowe christopher marlowe uh, like his plays are called problem plays also because his own life was quite problematic problematic and uh, uh, there is a view that uh, all the problems uh, found uh, you can see a kind of vent in his writings uh he is considered one of the most important uh, playwrights of the time of the elizabethan age and renaissance uh overall renaissance his works are dido queen of carthage tamburlaine the jew of malta dr faustus edward to the massacre at paris so these are his most important works and uh what i would suggest that you must read dr faustus jew of malta and tamburlaine in detail because these uh, three plays of marlowe uh, are part of one or the other university of uh, pakistan so these must be uh, read in detail uh, next we have uh, sir francis bacon and he is known as lord verulam he is also known as father of empiricism these are the titles which, which are attached to him and uh, he served as attorney general and lord chancellor of england he was born on Je uh, january 22 1561 and he died on april 9 1626 so these are the personal details that you have to keep in mind and now we come to his works uh, we all know that bacon uh, was known more for his essays uh, he was highly rep uh, he has like a, a high reputation uh in ss bacon's essays has been a part of uh, i uh, believe every university bacon's essay uh, is a part of syllabi all over the country so his works are which influenced in his time uh the great inspiration new atlantis it was an incomplete utopian novel the wisdom of the ancients masculine birth of time so these are his most important works the next important writer sir edmund spenser and uh, he was born in 1552 he died in 1599 uh, he belongs he also belongs to the elizabethan age uh, the shepherd's calendar was his work important work then the fairy queen uh, it is what he is known for actually it is an epic allegory that celebrates the tudor dynasty and the elizabeth one and elizabeth one uh then amority and epithalamion 
that is another important work of Sir Edmund Spencer. So these are the points that have been highlighted. You have to keep them in mind. Sir Walter Raleigh, a very prolific writer of this age. He was an English landed gentleman, writer, poet, soldier, politician, courteous spy and an explorer. And he was born in 1552 and he died on October 29, 1618. He is uh, like a very prolific writer. Like you can see, there is a whole bunch of writings that is on your screen and you have to keep them in mind that these are his works. And I would share another thing with you that these are not all his works. These are the most important who might be a part of one question or another in your paper. So one is the advice. Another of the same conceit begotten by the eyes, epitaph on Sir Philip Sidney, epitaph on the Earl of Leicester, even such is time, the excuse, false love, favour to the court, his petition to Queen Anne of Denmark, if Cynthia be a queen, in commendation of George Gascogian's uh, steel glass, the lie like hermit poor love and time the names reply to the shepherd of uh, of spencer's fairy queen on the snuff of a candle the ocean's love to cynthia a poem entreating of sorrow the pilgrimage the shepherd's praise of diana to his mistress what is a life so these are his important works and you can see he has written a lot and there are many which I have left. I have not added to this detail because uh, these are the most important which are included in certain questions. The next important figure of Elizabethan age, you can see that Elizabethan age is studied with stars. So it is Sir Philip Sidney. He was a poet, a courtier, a scholar and a soldier. Uh, Astrophil and Stella, a collection of 108 sonnets. Uh, then Acadia, a heroic prose romance. These are his important works. And then the defense of poesy. It is uh, like a literary criticism. And to date, it is a very uh, highly recommended book. The defense of poesy. The way he has defended poetry in this work is uh, outstanding. So, key features of Elizabethan literature. You can see that we have uh, talked about some really great people of the time of all times like the, they are the people who are copied imitated uh, even you can say uh, idolized to date so they make the elizabethan age uh, even within renaissance a very different thing a very different age so the key feature of elizabethan literature are like uh, uh, here being discussed not the whole of renaissance they will come at the end of this lecture so a uh, revival of interest in greek literature abundance of output you can see a lot had has been written during this age the new romanticism translations in elizabethan age were prolific spirit of independence development of drama and popularity of poetry so these are the key features of elizabethan literature we move on to the Jacobian age which is again a part of the renaissance and it started in 1603 and continued till 1605. Uh, well it is the reign of James and it is named Jacobian age. John Dunn, Michael Drayton, John Webster, Elizabeth Carey, uh, Ben Johnson and Lady Mary Roth were the key literary figures of the time. The King James translation of the Bible also appeared during the Jacobian age. Shakespeare remained a part of this era and had the same esteem as in the Elizabethan era. So, we talk about the Jacobian age and we come to John Donne, born on Jan January 22, 1572, died on March 31, 1631. He is known for metaphysical element and incorporation of conceits, which is uh, far-fetched metaphors in his poetry. And... Uh, we all know that he is known for his love poems and divine poems. Apart from love poems and de uh, divine poems, he has written by Thanatos, which came out in 1647, Pseudo Martyr, which came out in 1610, and uh, Ignatius, his Conclave, that came out in 1611. These are his uh, important works in prose. And then we have Michael Drayton. 
he rose in prominence during the elizabethan period and maintained his status through the jacobian period he is one of uh, very well known playwrights of the time he was born in 1563 he died in 1631 so uh, his important works are the harmony of the church 1591 idea the shepherd's garland 1593 idea's mirror 1594 pears gaveston 1593 or 1594 matilda 1594 and then the tragical legend of robert duke of normandy 1596 the legend of thomas cromwell earl of essex 1607 and muses elysium 1630 so these are his important works along with their years of uh, you can say uh, staging or publication then we have john webster in the jacobian age and he is again a playwright his uh, important works are the malcontent 1604 northward ho 1607 famous history of sir thomas white 1607 uh, westward ho 1607 the white devil uh, this one is the most important work of john webster and it is what he is known for actually the white devil the most celebrated work of john webster and i would suggest you go and uh, look uh, look for it on web and read it in detail because this might be a part of the questions so it uh, it, uh, it was in 1612 Uh, a monumental column 1613 the devil's law case it was like a uh, uh, stage in 1610 and published in 1623 then the duchess of melfi uh, it was also uh, you can say uh, started before 1614 and it was published in 1623 monuments of honor 1624 uh, aps and virginia it was published in 1654 a cure for a cuckold it was published in 1661 anything for a quiet life it was published in 1662 so again lots of work is being done in jacobian age also and uh, you can see how much webster wrote then there is elizabeth carey uh, viscountess of falkland born in 1585 died in 1639 she is known as the first woman to have published an original play so that is one point that you have to keep in your mind it might be a question who was the first lady to have published an original play and the answer would be elizabeth carey or uh, there can be a question what was elizabeth carey's title and she was viscountess falkland so uh, you have to keep this uh, you can say detail in your mind and that tragedy which she wrote was the tragedy of maryam uh, her works are the mirror of the world a translation of abraham Uh, Ortelius is Le Mirror of the Monde. ये एक French work है जिसका उसने translation किया. The Tragedy of Miriam, the Fair Queen of Jewry, and it was published in 1613. This is what I have just told you was the first uh, ever play written by a woman. Reply of the Most Illustrious Cardinal of Paris, 1630. The History of the Life, Reign, and Death of Edward II, or the History of the Most Unfortunate Prince. king edward ii that was published in 1680 we move on and jacobian age uh, also has ben johnson ben johnson is among the best known writers and theorists of english renaissance literature second in reputation only to shakespeare a prolific dramatist and a man of letters highly learned in classics he profoundly influenced the augustan age later on so Ben Jonson again lots of works lots of works you can see they are in front of you uh, the alchemist first performed in 1610 uh, Barthol uh, Bartholomew Fair first performed in 1614 the case is altered first published in 1609 Catelyn his conspiracy first published in 1611 and then Cynthia's revels first performed in 1600 the devil is an ass first performed in 1616 Every man in his humor first performed in 1598 every man out of his humor first performed in 1599 uh, the magnetic lady a carolina era comedy first performed in 1632 uh, sejanus his fall 1603 the staple of news it is again a carolina era satire which was first performed in 1625 a tale of a tub 
uh, it is again a Carolyn era comedy first performed in 1633 and Volpane or the Fox 1605 so uh, these are his works and which are the most important they have been highlighted about which there might be a question and the rest has been left unhighlighted Ben Johnson's masks apart from uh, plays he also wrote masks and these are the names of his masks uh, a challenge at tilt the golden age restored the Irish mask love restored the mask of house Auburn the fairy prince the mask of blackness the fortune isles and their union gypsies metamorphosed love freed from ignorance and folly mask of augurs mask of queens the queen's mask the mask of beauty so let's move on and the next writer we are going to talk about is in the uh, in this jacobian age is lady mary roth and she was born in 1587 and she died in 1653. Uh, Love's Victory, a pastoral closet drama written in 1620 is one of her very uh, important works. Then she wrote The Countess of Montgomery, Urania, it, which is also known as Urania and taken as the first ever prose romance composed by a woman. The full work exists in two volumes, the first published in 1621 and the second written but unpublished during Roth's lifetime. The novel also contains several versions of Roth's sonnet sequence. She also wrote a sonnet sequence which was Pamphylia and Amphilanthus. It is the name of the sonnet sequence which she wrote. So many lines from this sonnet sequence are also found in this uh, uh, you can say novel and another thing that you have to keep in mind that she was the niece of uh, Philip Sidney let's move on and we come to the Caroline age which started in 1625 and continued till 1649 uh, this particular age uh, is covers the reign of uh, Charles one King Charles one and uh, John Milton Robert Burden and George Herbert are some of the notable figures of this era there are some others but the most notable have been uh, you can say presented here. So John Milton, we all love him for his epic uh, Paradise Lost, but uh, he wrote uh, many other things including political pamphlets because his time was full of you can say political uh, upheaval uh, and he like was not an impartial person, he was partial, he had some political ideas and he uh, composed them in many pamphlets. But here we are talking about some other things he, uh, which he write on the morning of Christ's nativity 1629 on Shakespeare 1630 on arriving at the age of 23 1631 the Allegro, Allegro 1632 a mask presented at Ludlow Castle commonly known as Comio 1634 Lycidas 1637 poems of Mr. John Milton both English and Latin. It was a collection of his poems which came out in 1645. When I consider how my light is spent or on his blindness. Uh, it is a sonnet which he wrote in 1652. Uh, on the late massacre in Pagemont, 1655. Paradise Lost, 1667. Paradise Regained, 1671. Samson Agonists, 1671. And Arcades, A Mask date is unknown uh, on his deceased wife to the nightingale on reaching the age of 24 so these are the most notable works of john milton uh, one thing which i forgot to mention was his date of birth and date of death he was born on uh, december 9 1608 and he died on november 8 7, uh, 1674 robert burton uh, not very prolific but influential. He was born in 1577 and he died in 1640. Burton is known for his Latin comedy Philosoph Faster which he wrote in 1605 uh, and it was successfully performed at Christ Church in 1618 but he is uh, more acknowledged for the anatomy of melancholy which came out in 16, uh, 1621. George Herbert and George Herbert again uh, is known for uh, like uh, he was uh, influenced by Dunn and he is known for the metaphysical elements in his poetry. Uh, his poems which are most famous like these are not the all but most famous are Aaron, 
the alt the altar the british church the collar easter wings the affliction church monuments artillery death life denial discipline the elixir jordan love 1 2 and 3 the flower the forerunners redemption sin virtue well from the title you can also see the religious element being uh, discussed in his poetry but it was not uh, you can say puritanic type of thing it is something uh, different from that so uh, george herbert is another important uh, you can say writer of the time the commonwealth period which started in 1649 and continued till 1660 well the period is between the end of the english civil war and the restoration of the stuart monarchy it is called the commonwealth period this is the time when oliver cromwell a puritan ruled the nation at this time public theaters were closed for nearly two decades to prevent public assembly and to combat moral and uh, religious transgressions john milton and thomas hobbes wrote political works drama suffered a lot but prose writers such as thomas fuller abraham cowley and andrew marvel published prolifically so this particular period is not that important uh, from the uh, point of view that we do not have so many works in the time to be discussed here let's see the key features of renaissance a renewal uh, a renewed interest in classical antiquity like classical works were being imitated uh, such as milton's epic and shakespeare's dramas although shakespeare broke certain of the rules of uh, you can say classical drama which came from the uh, uh, greeks but and, and also latin but uh, he still maintained many similarly uh, epic uh, much celebrated i should say the most celebrated form of poetry the way homer wrote uh, milton copied him but copied it in a very different way so interest was in classical antiquity and also there were some experiments with them arise in humanist philosophy then a belief in self human worth and individual dignity radical changes in ideas about religion politics and science so these are the key features of renaissance and these key features influenced the coming ages uh, of which we are going to discuss in the later periods uh, thank you very much for watching this video the system is to be continued in the next video we are going to discuss the neoclassical period i hope this lecture must have been very uh, you can say beneficial for you and i expect you to subscribe for my channel like this video and share it onwards with the people who uh, really need it thank you very much